today I'm going to be talking about how to dye cellulose yarn, meaning any naturally derived plant-based fiber. So that would be cotton, bamboo, rayon, hemp, or anything that grows in the ground. It's a totally different process from dyeing protein fibers like wool, silk, alpaca, etc. I really love the Malabrigo kettle dyed effect, and it's a different process to get it on to a cotton yarn as opposed to getting it on a wool or other animal fiber yarn. So I'm going to show you step by step how we get that effect. This is 13 ounces of yarn and a quarter cup soda ash and the water level if you look closely is quite low and we want that because when we add the dye it's not going to over mix. So we have these universal indicator pH strips we're going to use. The dye strikes best between 10 and 11 pH. So grab our little test strip Okay, now we're going to check that color against our booklet. And I don't know if this shows, but in real life it's very much that number 10 blue color. I have diagrammed out each of these five, which colors we're going to use and in what order. So we're going to grab clear yellow. Now I'm going to use just the dye powder. I'm not going to mix the stock because I want this to be quite concentrated. We're going to put it across the top. Now I'm just going to use a pair of tongs and I'm going to work this in so we don't have any white patches. Pull it back, bring it forward. You want to be conservative with your placement because it's going to grow. So you put it about halfway where you want it and expect it to move forward. Now we're going to go in with our second color, which is a slightly different yellow. And I, you can see I'm not putting it directly on the demarcation line, but just past it. And I'm going to work this color towards this color. And I find when I mix dye stock that I get really desaturated colors. This is one of the rare times I use dye powder directly on the yarn. And this is just something I do for cellulose fibers. The particular one is going to be like the Garibaldi fish. This will be like the kelp forest, California rock coral, the oceanic blues, and this one will be the soft greens. So we're going to apply the dye on all of them. So we have our base colors all laid down, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tongs and go pan by pan and gently pull them apart looking for for example, under here, lighter patches. And I've already laid out complementary colors that we're going to speckle over and deposit in so that we have more color, more variation, more visual interest in the finished fabric. So for example, we're going to use Mars Dust, which is a really pretty terracotta brown over this. We're going to be using turquoise here in the green sea kelp one. We're going to be using hot hibiscus and citrus yellow here in this marigold to purple gradient. We're also going to speckle with citrus yellow on the blue and we're going to use a combination of these colors to sort of break up the monotone look. You can use a salt shaker and there's other methods but I like just grabbing a pinch and just adding a little bit especially over the light section, you don't want this color to dominate. Now we're going to come into this lighter section, pull it apart, add in a little bit of that glacier blue, and then we're going to gently work it in. And we're going to go color by color, section by section doing that. Now we're going to grab some yellow with a clean, dry, gloved hand. And this isn't going to turn yellow, it's just going to intensify certain areas of the green. Now here in this blue, for example, we want to shade shift right at this line, or at least that's how I see it. So we're going to pull those aside, then we're going to grab some of this yellow, and in it goes, just along that line. Then I'm going to work it in. And 
and we continue on doing that like I said color by color row by row now a color that plays beautifully with both this orange and this really warm berry red pink is hot hibiscus grab a little bit right there in the pocket it goes and then we're going to work that in and you see when you get really close and I'll show you in the finished yarn that's how you get that marbling effect that's so beautiful and watercolor like okay so it's been 36 hours and we are now ready to rinse out our yarn now because we're using cellulose fibers and fiber reactive dyes the rinse process is significantly longer than if you were to dye wool with acid reactive dyes um, so understand that the rinsing and rinsing and rinsing you know it takes at least a minute for something that's really well set to rinse to clear. And I like to use a dye fixative at the end. So just a note before we get to the rinse stage, yes, it's gonna take you at least a minute to five minutes to get all the excess color out. That's just how this dye and this type of fiber behave. Okay. Rinse in cool, not hot. And as you can see, most of the dye, there's very little coming out of this. So this one's not gonna take that long. So as you can see, it's actually fairly well set. There's very little excess dye, and this is just the first pass. Now that these have rinsed to clear, we're gonna put about two gallons of cold water in a big pot some dye fixative from Dharma. I only use this on cellulose fibers, not protein fibers. We're gonna put about six pumps. Let's see if I can get this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna take our well-rinsed yarn and throw it in. I do like colors with light colors, so I'm not going to put the orange in with the green. I'm going to do a whole separate can for that. And we let this sit for a half an hour. As we can see, it did its job. The water is clear. The dye fixative has been on for a half an hour. We're going to rinse this out, and then we're going to put it in a fabric softener bath. So two gallons of water and about two tablespoons of any kind of fabric softener, if you're sensitive, don't get the scented kind. I like the smell of it. Okay. Now we just get out the excess water. And we're going to throw it in the washer or a centrifuge and put it on the drain and spin cycle. If you don't do this, you will end up It'll take twice as long to dry the yarn. And here's the finished product. Cotton takes a little longer to dry, so you wanna make sure it's in direct sunlight and uh, for at least 12 hours. So here's the finished result. I hope you guys like the tutorial and this helps you in the future with your bamboo and cotton yarn.